Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're back here at my friend Yoel's shop, Fusion Motor Company. Like we were talking about off camera, at some point here soon, you guys, because we're gonna keep coming back and shooting. They have so many extraordinary vehicles here. We will do kind of an overview of what they do because it's hard to grasp what you guys do without actually seeing it from the Carbon to the Eleanors to the Land Rovers, the dealership. There's a lot is. going on. Yeah, there's so I mean, much. You have so many moving pieces at this company. I know. I know. Because we haven't done Mopar in a while, Yoel, when we were here a couple days ago, was like, hey, you guys want to shoot this? Yes. The overall look of this car is very stock. It's a sleeper. It doesn't look modified at all, but yeah. it's kind of modified. It is, it is. And I kind of been blocking this, Sean. Yeah. So kind of like give you a little clue, you yeah. know, for the, for the modern guys. What Notice this does. no headlight, guys. Yeah. And it's not because it broke and they didn't want to replace it. <laughs> yeah. So that's, into, that's feeding cold air yes. into what's under here. You know what it is. Let's pop it and okay, show it. All right, let's show it. This is really cool, you guys, because the car looks so original otherwise. The Hellcat motor. Just stock, only 707. Only 707, it's stock. <laughs> but you remember, the Roadrunners used to run quick on the drag strip. They're light, they're a good straight line car. And they came stock with what, three, 400 yeah. horsepower? Max. And what'd you say it goes to transmission wise? It's got a Turmax six speed in it. So it's a six speed, it's all modern they kept the pistol grip in there. So it feels correct, it feels right. It's funny, we shot recently the car Dave Salvaggio built, that blue Superbird. Oh yeah. And yeah, that one's nice Hellcat, but it's the auto, because the owner of it wanted the auto. Eight speed auto? Yeah, so it's just well, got, it's got the, the dial. It's got the knob off the new one. I'm not knocking it, I mean the car's a bitchin' car. I drove yes, it, and it yes. drives wonderfully. But old Mopar, for me, you want to grab that pistol grip. Yeah, so that's what I really like about this car few things I appreciated it when we bought this car, that they use all the factory components. Always makes me feel good when they're able to adapt all the OEM stuff, so right. I know it's gonna be more reliable. Right. The radiator, the fans, the AC condenser, the tanks were all OEM. So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, somebody paid attention, they didn't throw a lot of aftermarket parts that don't right. match. Even so, it's not as custom, but I know I can drive this car. We were kind of looking a little bit before, and I, and I know you buy them and sell them yep. so quickly yep. here, but this one has, it's still stock framework underneath, but all, yes. the, all the suspension components have Control been Control arm, full tubular, K-member, sub-connectors. Cal tracks the on Cal the rear. track mm -hmm. in the rear. It's mm -hmm. got a Dana 60 with 354 rear gears. It's Which pretty beefy, really nice. it's pretty nice. So it's not a full chassis car, right. but it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. and. It's got the Viking shocks on it. It's got good components, right. uh, four disc brakes from Wheelwood. Right. So really good stuff where you know you can drive the car. One of the things that we always go back and forth on, even when we just shot the Cadillac recently here, yes. the Kindig Apollos. built, yep. if you had to work on anything in the engine, you got a day of pulling metal out of the way to get to everything. It's a full custom, it's a show yeah. car. And, yeah. and, and again, beautiful. beautiful. It's a piece of art. St it yeah. totally is, yeah. but this is one Jump you can actually turn the key and go drive the car and have a good time. And, and I'm 100%. with you, dude. All the Even though this doesn't look as pretty Sick. as some yeah. custom fabricated yep. bitchin' thing, it's like, we know this works. It was engineered. Exactly. It's, it's the right capacity. Mm -hmm. It's the right flow. It's all the right it's stuff. all the right stuff. Doesn't leak. When I saw the opening here, I assumed it was going to feed directly to, I thought and the intake didn't. would yeah. come down to here. If it was me and I did all of that, I would probably come into the inner fender, box this so I can get only cold air. Right. And I'm not sucking any hot air into this filter. Totally. If it was me, it would be more efficient. Yeah. It would work better for what they worked on and the customization level, it's working. Yeah. But I tell you what, I bought this car out of state and I jumped in and started driving it. I took one of my dealer plates and I actually drove it around. I was there for a weekend and it was great and it's so much fun. And then when he, yeah. even when he came to the shop, it's one of the cars that I told the guys, leave my plate on it. And I, I put three, 400 miles on the car. Oh, nice. I really enjoy driving this car because <laughs> it's raw. You know how good the supercharger sounds on a Hellcat. But with no insulation in an old car, yeah. it sounds so much better than the new cars. I'm All sure. you hear is the Super I even I, I don't even know if the car has a radio, honestly. Yeah. All I was doing is trying to go in the booth <laughs> so I could hear the supercharger. Yeah. And you know, I drive everything and yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun car to drive. So. I can't wait to go for a drive in it, especially. So this color, which by the way, you guys, Throw it back at us if you know the name of this color, because yeah. we've seen a couple names, yes. right? One was Spring Green Spring that we green, saw. Don't uh, know. No. SF or EF6 yeah. six or Six some, or whatever something. it was, yeah. All we know for sure, it's an impact color. It's a high impact color. It's a high impact color. <laughs> and it works for this car, yeah. And 
the white vinyl roof, which not usually a fan of the vinyl roofs. Usually I, I, I'm not a big fan of the, the vinyl roof, but not when I all. looked at the stems of this car, how they did the white stripe and the vinyl and the white inside, it just worked for some reason. It actually reason. looked yeah, really Yeah, it worked. Good. So I was and like, with okay, I can live with it. And it was a Plymouth thing versus a Dodge thing, yeah. wasn't it? You got the Superbirds and you got the Daytonas. Daytonas yes. didn't all have vinyl. They the Superbirds exactly. all had Daytona exactly. vinyl. So they, yeah, they, one brand did it, the other brand didn't. Yeah, you know? yeah. But it does look really good on it here. It does. It, wor it worked well. Some people may love it or hate it. You know, I know people, some people are against vinyl tops, yeah. period. I think if you went color on the top, I would probably do the upholstery in black. But yeah. this has its own look. Like when you see this car, it's got its own look to it. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you most people going down the road think it looks like a perfectly restored 69 Roadrunner. So wheel and tire setup on here. They did the Steelys. They painted them to match color. I love that look, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and on the tires, they went, I don't remember the name of the company, but they, they went to the company that shaves off all the logos and shaves all the numbers off the tires. They redline it. Yeah. I think we're running 295s in the right in yeah. the rear. So not super huge, yeah. but looks good. You know, it's not tubbed or anything, but it looks really nice. Right. They, I mean, they were really trying to keep a period correct car. Yes but make it a real serious driver car. Yes, with power and reliability. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like they were mm -hmm. trying to, to achieve with it. Yeah. And I think they did a good job. You know, we talked off camera, like it's funny that only on a Mopar, you know, you can mix red with green and orange and white, like you can mix it. You only it works it. on a Mopar. It only works on, because I mean, Mopar was so known for the crazy, the like the plum crazy purple and the sublime, sublime. green. I mean, like yeah, all, the all, most outrageous yeah. color. Mangoes, all the colors. Yeah. yeah. So you keep all the Roadrunner stuff. Yes. If you're looking at the front and you know anything, you pay attention, you see that that opening in the headlight. But it's really cool, dude. The white stripes leading to, to a little very cat, small. Like a little it's very subtle, but giving us a Hellcat there. Yeah. And like back here, the SRT logo again. Absolutely. But subtle, it's not like. Yeah, how many times you see guys putting like a cat this big or big? Well, like you know? the Dumbo Charger, which I love that car. Oh right? yeah, that's a the, cool car. But it's really a huge graphic on it the side that you, I think you either love or hate that. Yeah. This you could actually just miss. You could walk right by exactly. it. Exactly, it's, it's, it's more detail, I love it. Mm -hmm. I think for Dumbo it works because the elephant. You know, I if agree. it was a cat, a huge cat, I would not be a fan of it at all. Yeah. Because the elephant and how unique that engine and how rare it is, mm -hmm. I think it worked for that car. But I think for this one, this is a nice little touch. It's just very yeah. subtle, man. Yeah. I remember we were looking at before and I thought it was neat, was the the exhaust coming, coming all the way back rather than dumping in front of the, the rear end. I'm not a huge fan where they just dump it. Ton of dust, it sounds, it, it gets all the harmonics off the bottom of the car. You get a lot sounds, of drone. A lot of drone mm -hmm. when you're driving. Mm -hmm. I like it running all the way to the back. Yep. This has a great sound to it. Do you hear the supercharger Absolutely, on it? Absolutely, yeah. You're gonna hear it quite a bit. Yeah. It's not insulation, so you're gonna, all you're gonna hear is supercharger. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Hellcats are great for that, especially if you do the pulley kit on it, and then they really whine the like best. crazy. Yeah, the best. Mm. And the best supercharged sound, I think, out there right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a full Magnaflow system on it that sounds great on the Hellcat. So we're yeah. a big fan of it. All right, let's look at your crazy interior yep. here. So some of the things you were pointing out off camera yep. that I think are really neat. It's all stock. It's all stock gauge cluster yep. here. Yeah. But now we've got this for all your pertinent information. Yes. <laughs> and we get the Roadrunner. Yeah, the BB. But then this over here, you were saying. So the car's got cruise control, right? Isn't that cool? love that. So other things that you were pointing out to me earlier was vintage air. They did the nice, you know, controls for it that are easy to slide. No more cables. They did all the factory looking ones. You know, mm -hmm. the vents are all factory looking. Mm -hmm. I, I just love it. It's super clean. They put the radio that's the vintage radio, but it's still got Bluetooth. I noticed that with the microphone up yeah. here. Yeah. I don't know how much you can hear. I was going to say, I, <laughs> I wasn't able to use it. Your windows yeah, down, yeah. supercharger blast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I can hear you're driving. You yeah, you yeah. want to call you me okay? later? Exactly. That's all it is good for. Hey, I'm yeah. on the road. Can I call Oh, yeah, back. yeah, yeah, exactly. And you don't even know if they heard you and you just hang up. So, the one thing else that you'll notice when you're driving it, what I really appreciate about this car is that even so it's got a big steering wheel, it's the sitting position and where the shifter lands. Dude, the shifter, when I just went to put it in neutral before to, to start it, I mean, it's not only where it's positioned, but you can tell that's the modern Tremec, the, how articulate yeah. it is and how smooth it is, you know? Yes. 
I mean, let's be honest. There's nothing like grabbing a pistol grip. It's just, I love it. I swear to God, to me, it's the coolest shifter on the planet. It really is. hundred percent. Yeah. Where do you go from here? On, no. on a manual? That's no. the coolest. There's yeah. nothing cooler. Yeah. I, well, let's go, let's go drive this puppy, man. Let's I want to, I'm, I'm, let's do it. Time to go drive. Right away, you hear the whine of the supercharger. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I mean, you can definitely feel the upgrades to the suspension with a little bit of bouncing yeah. from the Caltrax. Yeah. It definitely makes you still feel like you're in a 60s car, but then, yeah, exactly. I mean. Yeah, you're just cruising. Feels great. I swear, dude, there's nothing like the feel of a pistol grip in your hand. Like, I don't want to let go of it. I'll one right. hand to drive right. the car the entire time. And it comes right to you. They did a great job on the positioning yeah. of this. Yeah, I agree. Kind of makes me a little nutty with cars is when the ergonomics are way off on them, you know, and it makes you not want to drive the car Absolutely. at all. Absolutely. And you know, you're more a normal size guy. I'm a little on the short side. So if it's not right, I just don't feel comfortable. Anymore. Yeah. Um, Hellcat motors do that, don't they? they? They always give you the wine. Yeah. I thought it was always because people do that smaller pulley kit that makes it really scream, but no, you just naturally one, yeah, get it. Naturally, don't you? they they hum. So I think in fourth gear is where you get the most whine on the supercharger. Is it really? Usually, that's where I feel it the best. Yeah. And you know, the Roadrunners are not known for the best handling car. I'm not gonna compete with the Porsche and the, in the oh, canyons. God, no. I mean, right? this, it's a great this, straight line car. This big long car, oh, no yeah. way. Oh yeah. With like what we shoot all the time is the custom, obviously a focus on pro touring and resto mod builds. And when guys start doing stuff like replacing entire chassis on a vehicle that all they're gonna do is street cruise it, my thought is always like, why don't you just upgrade all the suspension components? Maybe brace the chassis a little bit if you're gonna give it that much more power. Yeah, and that's what they did here, right? They didn't go over the top. Exactly. And they just wanted a good driver to go out there and just run. Suspension-wise, it still feels a bit like an old car. Yeah. But it's not as, like it's definitely not doing the floaty thing, you know? No, like, no, the steering is tighter a little bit. The steering's and, much yeah. tighter, yeah. Yeah, I'd drive this all day long. Right. No problem. Plus, knowing that, I mean, we're not using it right now. It's a nice enough day to have windows oh, yeah. down. Oh, yeah. The idea that you do AC, have AC, you have close you the heat if you need. Yeah. If I was going to nitpick, the one thing that drives me a little bit nutty is how long it takes for the clutch to engage. Yeah, I noticed that. The pedal that. comes yeah. quite a bit out before it starts. It can it be starts. adjusted. It can of be adjusted, course. yeah. That's being nitpicky because the car, I think, is nice enough that, yeah. you, that you can. Yeah, it does you, all right, well, let's dig into the finer yeah. details, you know. Dude, I'm hitting like 3,500. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. so much I'm waiting there. for you to open it up a little bit so we can hear that supercharger. Yeah, well, look where we're louder. out. I mean, I we know, got I these know. guys in front I know, of us. I know. We got the minivans. Dodge really has got to admit, amongst all the American car makers, they're the ones that have really been like, oh, yeah, we're going all in on power. You I mean, know what? They stayed pure to what they love. You can tell they love cars. I grew up being a Chevy guy, but you gotta respect what Mopar is doing. Totally. All the colors they're still using. They're being brave out there. They're putting something that people just love. I look, think so. Look what that new Demon 170 is bringing. Like crazy money, you know? And, like they're, and they're what is to it, put, like a 1,025 thousand, stock horsepower? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I hate to admit, but I do think we're in the heyday of yeah, no, so that's Gas why powered, big power muscle cars. I mean, that's saying, that's it, right? I mean, after that, the new Challenger has been announced already, and it's, it's, it's all electric. electric right? So, yeah, for me, it's kind of like it's sad, but uh, they're coming, they're going out with a bang, 1,025 horse. And, and I gotta tell you, that's the only exciting part about it, everybody going electric that I think the cool cars that you and I are driving every day yeah. are gonna be even cooler. I think like, so. People are going to have electric cars in their garage and they're going to be looking for a gas motor car that drives like this. I'm just wondering, 20 years from now, does this become like the horse and buggy 
where yeah you can drive that thing but you got to do it on some closed private road somewhere i hope not i don't think so you i know, think we like, have enough culture i hope i hope so that it doesn't go away like that yeah. i hope so no man. i don't think so when you get to the point where you've got every car on the road is an autonomous computer driven vehicle how do human beings interact yeah. with that you know with their supercharged engine trying to get in and out of traffic it's but, an interesting time we're in yeah because we are we're definitely seeing the wave of technology. It goes at such rapid paces that, you know, it's going to take over our world. Jeez. God, this thing just does everything you want, dude. Yeah, I mean, incredible brakes. You know, I mean, the, the touch on it's like, Geez, there's so much brake there. Yeah. The shifting's incredible. The powers. I mean, this is demand. just bitching. This yeah. is so. It's that sound. Come on. Getting into it, I'm laughing. I'm like yeah. 35, 3800 RPM, and yeah, it's yeah, just you're not even in it. Yeah, friggin' bruiser, man. It's an interesting approach on this, you know, to go that far with powertrain, transmission, and yeah. then to leave the car for the most part looking like it's an all original '69 Roadrunner, you know. In a lot of ways, I think that's the way it should be. I think it's neat because we've gone about as far as we can on full custom cars, you know. A lot of those cars spend a lot of time on the trailer. They do, and then they date themselves yeah. oftentimes. Not always, yeah. but I think a lot of those cars that are the hit car of the moment date themselves yeah. within a within a short period of time, you know. Yeah. appreciate too dude i know the this. amount of liability that that oh, yeah. we both face right but yeah. i appreciate that you trust me to the point where you let me drive your cars yeah, and course. you're not worried about me doing uh like you've had people do in the past of you course. know taking yeah, of advantage course. of your of kindness yeah. i trust you guys so that's good Ooh, doggy. Does hook up those? Yeah, those track wires. The, yeah, they work those good. things work great. They do work good. It's funny. I don't always think they're the best looking when you look from a I side view, they and they kind of hang down. I had to put them on my '69 Camaro because I would blow the tires off that car all the time. Really? So I had to put them, and they do work really well. But I don't like the way they look from the side view. No, the side view shows too yeah. much down, yeah. hanging down. Yeah. But they, that's the only way they can get them really to work, right? Yeah. So. I get the I get the functionality of it. Funny, isn't it how modern cars like to run hotter? Yeah, they run better like that. That's how they want them. That's what I like about this car also. They kept it all, you know, original. It doesn't have a crazy tune. This no, thing this on the thing. freeway, by the way, 1800 RPM. Right, just six cruises. gear, just cruising. Uh, Beautiful. Probably gets good gas mileage too. I bet you you're getting close to 20 miles a gallon. Isn't that wild in a car yeah. making over 700 yeah. horsepower? Yeah. What are we at? 2,600 at about 40 miles an hour in third gear, and yeah, you do that, and there, yeah. like, she stands up. Yeah. I don't know. For me, there's yeah. plenty there to. Oh yeah. Man, I love the steering on this. It yeah. feels like tight and weighted, and yeah, it feels good. Well, talk about a seriously cool build, man. I love how factory this car looks and how far from factory it is but every element of it still screams old school muscle car. The little bit I just got to drive it, I mean, it literally does everything you want a car to do. It brakes well, it accelerates like crazy, it digs in and goes, 
And yeah, I'm not digging in that hard on the accelerated 3,500, 4,000 RPMs, but getting to feel the power of the 707 horsepower that this car makes, just bitching, man. And by the way, lots more to come with Fusion. I mean, not only are they just really super cool people, but what they do here is pretty mind boggling from the dealership to the builds, to the carbon fiber, in-house, everything. I'm gonna give you guys in an episode coming up soon, we're gonna do a walkthrough and give you a real overview of what Fusion Motor Company is just all about. I say thanks for hanging and watching what we do, you guys. You know I really do genuinely appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.